I was wrong about the Mosaic Sound Collective. It turns out they are not the Walmart of the Austin music scene. Ham day is coming and you only have 13 days left until we're reminded that in Austin, being a musician is a pre-existing condition. And the newest music census has been extended. I wonder why. The answer won't surprise you. This is Austin Music News. Hello and welcome to Daily Austin Music. I am Pastor Colin McDonald. Today's top story, the Mosaic Sound Collective is losing its lease and winding down operations. Now, when Mosaic first came along in 2017, I called it the Walmart of the Austin music industry, but it turns out I was wrong. It's more like Kmart. You see, Mosaic tried to offer a one-stop shop for what they thought every musician needed. Recording studios, rehearsal spaces, back lines, and they even had their eyes on providing affordable housing. Now, short of selling health insurance and used cars, they aim to have musicians save money and live better, as Walmart slogan goes. But as their five-year lease ran out in 2021, they limped along on a month-to-month -month lease until now, and can soon not even be able to use Kmart slogan, we still exist. As it turns out, you can't tune a fish, and musicians still don't pay rent. Stuff like this will never work as long as we base the revenue model off what musicians can pay instead of what you can make off what they create. So the question is, was Mosaic a nonprofit or just not profitable? According to the Austin Chronicle, they had been supportive and hopeful some of the $12 million approved by voters in 2018 to secure creative spaces in the city would be headed to Mosaic and give the group the money it needed to take over the property and partner with surrounding property owners in building affordable houses intended for creatives. Sounds like an Austin nonprofit to me, but don't worry. If Mosaic doesn't find a new place to rent, I know for a fact there is at least two more copycat models with high hopes of building an extremely similar music hub. Because if at first you don't succeed, let's just build another Hindenburg. Maybe the market just isn't ready for a centralized music hub in one of the most sprawled out public transportation wasteland cities in Texas. Maybe the musicians just aren't hungry enough to buy more and spend less for services they can find literally all over the city. Maybe, just maybe, what works in Chicago or Portland won't work here. And maybe the Austin music industry is just a homogenous mirror of the tech world that's taken over the city. A bunch of small companies that up close look like a mosaic of beautifully unique puzzle pieces. But when you zoom out, there's only two or three parent companies that are hedging their bets, profiting from real estate, and short selling the creative community. You know, maybe. In other news, the musicians that these box store music hubs are relying on for revenue are about to hit the streets to beg for healthcare in just two weeks. That's right, Ham Day is coming. On September 13th, you'll be able to see live music in more places than during South By. Musicians everywhere. In the bank, at Jiffy Lube, and even the airport bathroom. Would you like to hear number one or number two? Welcome to Austin, where being a musician is a pre-existing condition where you have to busk for birth control or bypass surgery. Where's that sad puppy Sarah McLaughlin video when you need it? With just $2 a day, you can sponsor a degenerate Austin musician and feel great when you miss all their shows. Come one, come all. Come help enable the musicians that make the music you love to ignore. But seriously, is ham good? Well, does a bear like bacon? Sure, yeah, but it isn't the best diet. That bear needs an economy that encourages tourists to abandon their picnic baskets and avoid paying ticket surcharges to get in our national parks. Now moving on to the Greater Austin Music Census, according to KXAN Sound Music Cities said the 2022 Greater Austin Area Music Census will be extended until September 9th instead of August 15th. It said Sunday night the number of daily responses to the survey was picking up. Now is this census reboot a roll call or a liability list? Join the cause or a way to claim your identity as a dependent on the city government. Local musicians don't only allow Austin to claim the live music capital of the world, but they also create very nice buckets for property taxes. Now, who's promoting this? Well, turns out a bunch of nonprofits that regularly enter the grant giving sweepstakes sponsored by tax write offs and organizations desperate to be associated with the creative culture Austin has been overmining since, well, forever. Collectively, the wolf to Austin's Little Red Riding Hood. Why, what a big area you are including as Austin, Grandma. All the better to count you as dependents, my dear. Why, what insightful questions you ask. All the better to manipulate you, my dear. Why, what few questions about income you have. All the better to just ignore that. I'm sure you have another job or a spouse in the medical field, right? Please fill out this form so we know how to exploit you better. But don't worry, we all know how this tale ends. Little Red Riding Hood finds a music hub to save her and affordable housing to shelter her, all provided by her 10% take of the bar on Saturday nights, right? 
Now my question is, where's the music fan survey? How about we hear from the people that should be financially supporting the music community instead of feeding the big bad wolf of corporate grant giving tax write-offs that act like welfare for creatives? Let's ask the music fans what they want. And let's find out if they prefer supporting artists that support themselves or artists that are subsidized by city taxes. Let's find out if they want musicians to earn a living wage or just qualify for one. All right, that's it for Austin Music News. Thank you so much for watching. Do more, better, faster. I love you, and there's nothing you can do about it. I'll see you tomorrow.